What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update. And here is your daily briefing on the Tottenham COVID update. Uh, so what the situation is right now is that Dan Kilpatrick reports that Spurs have op that have this morning reopened the first team areas of Hotspur Way, which should raise optimism that they can face Leicester on Thursday night. And Conte set to lead a depleted Spurs squad in training again today. Uh, the Telegraph reporting Antonio Conte is facing the prospect of having only 13 available players um, this is senior players against Leicester on Thursday night so as it stands it does look like this game is going ahead on Thursday but with a very much depleted squad it seems yeah I mean it depends um, which players are back apparently two of the players already are back in training so um, with some more with a view to come back before Thursday but what can, kind of condition they're going to be in remains to be seen the Premier League actually just announced as well in regards to COVID protocols that um, every player now has to has to take a lateral flow test uh, on top of their two weekly PCR tests to, to, just to enter the training ground on a daily basis so that should give a better idea as to what who has positive cases and whatnot but um, in terms of uh, Thursday, looks positive in the game's going to go ahead, which is good. Um, hopefully, we can have a side which is uh, have a side out which is good enough to get a result. But it's just a guessing game as to who's going to be available. Yeah, uh, predicted lineup is going to be good fun tomorrow. Yeah, well, um, but. Yeah. Yeah, look, let's move on and let's talk about some transfers now as uh, Matt Law is reporting that Conte and Paratici will meet this week um, to talk about the transfer situation in January. And he's also said both Dusan Vlahovic and Adama Traore are both on Tottenham Hotspur's radar for January uh, with the former Dusan Vlahovic um, being earmarked as Antonio Conte as soon as he came in uh, to be his number one priority. Uh, so do you think there is a possibility of us getting him over the line in January? It's looking less and less likely by the week, isn't it, given his goal-scoring record? Like, is he really going to... And look, I think if, if, if it's ever going to happen, it has to be now. That's how I feel about it, because... We said that in the summer. Um, yeah, but now it's kind of like, if no one's going to push the bar out for him now... We have to do it. Otherwise, in the summer, it's going to be a big fight. Yeah. Um, because it's January, naturally, there are going to be less clubs in for him because less clubs are willing to spend big in January than in the summer. So there is an opportunity potentially now um, if we can convince him um, to come. But when, once it's the summer and he's only got a year left, um, there's going to be a lot more clubs than there is now. I'm sure there are going to be a few clubs even now interested in him. But if we are going to get him, it has to be now. So um, as soon as that's, Man that's City, the only way. As soon as Man City uh, pump their muscle, you know, and say that we want him, surely there's only one team he's going to go depends. to. Depends. It depends whether they push them, if they decide they want him now. Maybe City go, oh, we'll go, we're going to wait till the summer. We're going to see how it goes. And then Spurs kind of steal a march and say, no, we want, we want the deal done now. You know, we saw how we move for Conte and stuff. So, I don't know. Look, I just think, I don't think it's likely. I think it's very, very unlikely considering how much he's going to cost and um, who's going to be in for him. But if it is going to happen, it has to happen in January. And what about Adama? What's your feelings? Between yeah, Adama, has he even scored or got an assist yet this season? No, I think I he's know. been, I mean, I've seen a few performances of him which he looks just classic Adama yeah isn't classic it? Adama takes it past everyone and does nothing at the end of well, it look, if anyone can get the best out of him I'm hoping Conte can be that guy um, again maybe they'll make him into a fullback maybe <laughs> crossing maybe, maybe. <laughs> look when it comes to Adama we've said it I've said it so many times he's got that he's got such a unique set of skills that if you can kind of mould him into a, into a player that you want then he could potentially be unstoppable it's just about getting um, it's all about unlocking that potential out of him and it, and obviously at Wolves it hasn't happened under Bruno Lager again even though he's always a threat he just you can't really we, they haven't really managed to unlock that real final throw product and if Conte really believes he can do it I'm all for it because I because I believe there could potentially be a world class player in there but whether he whether he can actually do it is another question because is he an he's an enigma is he an upgrade on Lucas Moura no He's I don't. Easy. I don't think he's not not right now. Not the player he is right now. But Conte is known for improving players. Mm. So he could look for the skills that skill set Adama has. He has a far higher ceiling than potentially anyone in the squad. Like with his skill set, it's all about unlocking it. He just hasn't got that 
Um, don't, don't know what it is about him, but he doesn't. He never thinks things through properly. Yeah, he in can't his head. finish his dinners. That's Definitely what, not. That's... And he never makes the right decision in the final third a lot of the time. Yeah. But he, with his pace, his power, his shot power, mate, he could be unbelievable. I was saying be that I was very for this transfer. Yeah. I'd love to see Adama. I probably come still through. am. Um, you know, he just hasn't really impressed me so much this season. But having said that, he's just doing the same things that he has been doing over yeah. the last couple of years. But there was a time under Nuno uh, where he that kind of end product did massively improve. But then now it's just gone back to what it was. It has. But if Conte believes he can get the best out of him, uh, he can unlock something we haven't seen yet in the Dharma, should I say, then I'm all for the transfer. Then I'm all for it. But if it's just like a stopgap, then... Probably not. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with that. But let's move on and let's talk about Delhi Ali uh, once again. Matt Law saying Newcastle could show an interest in a loan deal for Delhi Ali, whilst a few German clubs want the midfielder who's open to a move abroad. Dan Kilpatrick saying Spurs are not expecting their valuation of the midfield to be met given his lack of football in the past 18 months, making a loan move more, more likely. And Sammy Mockball saying that Delhi Ali can leave Tottenham in January after it became clear he would be relegated to a peripheral role under Antonio Conte or maybe staying at a peripheral role under Antonio yeah, Conte. Yeah, it seems, it seems as though he hasn't impressed him. It seems as though he hasn't convinced. Look, we haven't seen him get much game time apart from Conference League. Um, so we all know that Deli Ali, for me, as, as I said, I don't see a place of him in the team anyway, even if he's playing well. So it's going to be tough for him to break in. So I think it makes sense for everyone. And look, with with Conte coming in, obviously it's going to be onus on Delhi to really try his best to to um, show Conte why he should be getting born per many minutes, and he hasn't been able to do that. So that's just the reality. Yeah. Um, in terms of the move to Germany, uh, what do you think about that? Because you, I know. He's not as young as the other players going over to Germany, but we've seen players, uh, young players go over to Germany, uh, do really well. And some of them coming back, you know, Jude Bellingham there uh, doing really well at the moment. Do you think that can kind of reinvigorate him? Never know. You never know. You never know how a club, how a player will fit a club. Sometimes a player just fits a club, a club like like a glove, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, sometimes it just fits. And who knows if he went to like a Dortmund or something or uh, Leverkusen, maybe he could start finding himself again, and um, and and it could work. But I think at Tottenham, I'm not. I don't even know. I wouldn't even say right now he's finished at Tottenham, but he he just needs he needs to move away to, at least temporarily because. It's like at Spurs, it's not going right. He's, I don't know if it's the environment, if it's his mentality. Maybe he needs a fresh, just a, a re refresh or something. But he's, he's on a hiding to nothing right now at Tottenham. He just needs a move. Yeah, I feel like uh, he needs a massive refresh. He needs to go away, uh, get out of the club environment or the Spurs environment for a while mm -hmm. and either come back or don't come back. But he needs to leave for a little bit. That's Definitely. Um, but anyway, let's move on and let's talk about Antonio Rudiger. Fabrizio Romano saying last night that Tottenham are not in the race to sign Chelsea defender Antonio Rudiger, who has uh, six months left on his contract. Um, but apparently he wants to be the top paid player in Chelsea around 400 grand a week. So, I mean, that was never a starter for Tottenham, was yeah, it? Yeah, and I said that. I said the fact that he wants that much money. And if he's going to if he's going to create complications for Chelsea, imagine how Tottenham negotiating for him is going is going to be. So, I never expected Tottenham to ever be close to Rudiger. We had an opportunity a couple of years ago, but we decided to pass up on it, which we're probably regretting now. Um and I think that this boat is if he's if he doesn't um join Chelsea, um, re-sign with Chelsea, it's going to be someone else. It won't be Spurs. Well, apparently, um, Real Madrid are circling around for him. And, well, they you know, like Real anyone. Real Madrid on a free transfer. That sounds. Uh, we ain't doing. we ain't signing him for anything close to 300, 400 grand a week. So mm -hmm. it's not happening. Yeah. And another one that's not happening in Antonio Anthony Martial, Fabrizio Romano saying Tottenham Hotspur at the moment are saying there's nothing going on with Anthony Martial. Uh, this is a story we brought to you a couple of days ago. Um, and you put out a tweet, didn't you, saying, would you want to see Martial uh, replace Bergwijn? And not many people said yes. Yeah. A um, lot of people saying no, actually. Big no. Mm. Um, so a lot of people... Um, a lot of people are against it. I, I still think he's got a lot of quality. So, I, I mean, I, I think if Conte would be interested in him and he would want to come, I would, I would definitely be tempted by it, for sure. I still would. But it sounds like we're not... Look, he is on a lot of money, isn't he? So, sounds like we're, we're not that interested in him. Mm. 
All right. And the last story we've got is from Fabio Santini. And he says, uh, the closest team to signing Lorenzo Insigne is Tottenham. Conte is crazy about the forward and would like the player as early as January. And the winger is flattered by the interest. Uh, what do you make out of this story? Yeah, this is one where I think, again, his contract is not it might be running out fairly soon if I remember rightly so um, I think maybe in 18 months so yeah, apparently Conte really likes him I really like it Sydney I think he's a great player um, um, I think he's got so much quality his dribbling ability his finishing um, and another player who probably um, should be doing more than, than what he shows but his contract expires at the end of the season six months yeah, there you go 30th of June 2022 so maybe it's one that Conte sees as someone who can slot straight in and improve and improve the squad. Maybe he sees it like that. So I'm a big fan of Insigne. I've always really liked him. It's just I never feel like a bit like Hazard. I never feel like he truly unlocked his 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 uh, potential, mm. like true potential. He's got such talent, such yeah. a burst of pace. He's a tricky customer. Um, you know absolute beast of finishing outside the box sometimes with those curling efforts in the top corner. But I always felt he's a bit inconsistent, isn't he? Yeah. That's that's the problem. But he was quite good for Italy in the Euros, yeah. and he's a good, he's a quality player. He really is a quality player. I really like him. I think, but he's been a, also a player. He's been in Napoli for so long, hasn't he? Yeah. Ever since he was a kid, he came up through the ranks there, didn't he? And Napoli. Uh, well, he came through through the ranks at Pescara and then joined Napoli quite early on in his career. Yeah. yeah. So pretty much as a as a teenager, I remember him breaking into the team. So he's been there a while. So maybe it's another player who a change of scenery might unlock something else. In Sorry, him. he did come through the roots, l ranks of Napoli. He was yeah. just on Pescara at loan very early mm. on. Um, so yeah, he was a Napoli youth player, yeah. under 17s, under 19s. Um, so yeah, I mean, would I like to see him come in? Yeah, I would like to see him come in, but can I see him nailing down a starting spot week in, week out, week in, week out? I'm not too sure, but just because of the inconsistencies. I mean, there's a lot of similarities in terms of the inconsistencies with Lucas Moura, isn't there? Yeah, but I would say he. Yeah, there's a, there's similarities. I'd say Luke uh, Insigne has a better end product than Lucas. He's better at finishing. He makes better decisions usually in the final third, but he can be a bit frustrating, um, like dribbling down blind alleys, and sometimes he's not working the hardest as well. Mm. That kind of stuff. The work rate between Lucas and Insigne is probably very different for sure. I mean, last season he had his a, a very good season in 19 goals, um, and in 2016-17 he hit 18 goals. But apart from that. I mean, it's always just below or just over the 10 mark. Yeah, around the, yeah, around that. So, so if, you, yeah, you should be getting more. But, you know, that's on a it's consistent still level, it's much better than Lucas Moore. Yeah, who always is around the five mark, yeah, probably. So. Exactly. But, you know, 19 Serie A goals last year, you can't really knock that. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, I mean, look, if Conte's convinced, he can bring, come in and really... Conte is crazy about him. So, well, I'm definitely in for it then. All right. Um, all right, well, that is your Tottenham update for today. Not to fear, as we are back with all the usual match day content tomorrow. Uh, good morning, Tottenham, tomorrow morning, um, and also predicted lineup and all the pre match stuff. And then we're back for the watch alongs on Thursday night. I'll be in the stadium. Sim will be in the studio with Super Sai as well. All right. Uh, so looking forward to getting back to basics, all the match day content coming back. Uh, but that is your Tottenham update for today. If you want to grab the lovely new We Are Tottenham TV t shirts that we've got on sale, uh, Jungmann Son shirts and um, the Italian job shirts. I'll Italian, not Ireland. Yeah, <laughs> it's not an Irish shirt. It's, it's an Italian shirt. What a shirt. What that a is a beautiful shirt. Say, a a, shirt. It is a beautiful shirt. What a shirt. It's a beautiful shirt. Do the, do the Spider-Man. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But that is um, your Tottenham update for today. Link in the description below if you want to grab yourself a t-shirt. But thank you everyone for joining us today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.